Hi there and welcome back to the Data Lake in a Day series and today we've got the second in the lab series for you. Uh, in this one we're going to be uh, getting some data from the internet. Uh, that data is going to be collected using a logic app. Uh, this is a pretty common scenario where you might want to reach out to another system using a REST API and uh, just get some data. Uh, this is generally used for individual pieces of data rather than bulk loading. Uh, but technically there's no re real reason why you couldn't use it for larger data sources. So in the example, we're going to be using weather data, but I've seen this used for uh, collecting event information from, um, from exhibition centers, for instance, uh, collecting obviously weather information, collecting travel information, uh, pretty much any information where there's a publicly accessible API, even if it's not publicly accessible, you might have access internally to an API and you can use this technique. As you'll see, the, uh, the demo is really short, so this is a very simple, straightforward way of accessing APIs, dumping that data into the lake. Probably half of the time we're gonna spend on it today is actually processing that data, so we're gonna be uh, getting some information in a JSON format. This is really common for REST APIs, it's pretty much the, the default uh, way of delivering data. Uh, we're going to open up that JSON data, extract all of the individual fields, choose the ones that we want, and then we're going to construct a CSV file. The reason we're doing this uh, isn't really because we need a CSV file. Obviously, we can interpret JSON files just as well on the data lake. Uh, the reason why we're doing this is to show you that we can actually transform the data on the way in rather than landing it directly on the lake and processing it later. Um, we can, of course, and we do in the demo, uh, store the raw JSON data so that we've got a record of what data actually came in. In case there's a problem later, we can then go back and look at it. We can then update that data, uh, all of that kind of stuff. The service that we're using, uh, Open Weather Map, uh, offer a free service. They do have a much more comprehensive service that you could pay for. They're certainly by no means the only weather service out there. It's just, I Googled free weather API and this is the one that came up. Uh, but it's worked pretty well for me so far and I've been collecting this data. Uh, little note about the cost though. Um, so I have had a uh, an API logic app hitting this every day for, for about a year. My logic app so far hasn't cost me a penny and the storage I think has now ticked over onto a penny worth of storage. So this is a really, really cheap solution as well. So uh, don't be afraid of bringing in more data into the, the data lake using this technique. But do be mindful that if you're doing hundreds of thousands of calls, it's going to cost you, it's going to cost the provider to, to give you that stuff. So just be mindful of, of how much data you're collecting this way uh, and make sure that that's kind of within your budget. So I hope you enjoy the lab and I'll see you in lab three. For this lab, go to uh, Data Lake in a Day and uh, go to the Lab 2 instructions. Uh, the link is obviously down below uh, in the description of the video. Uh, and then we're going to go to the API section and sign up for an account. And what this gives us is a uh, API key that we can then use to access the service and get the weather information that we wanted. So pop in a username, uh, your email address and a password. Confirm that you're not a robot and agree to the terms and conditions and create the account. I've sped it up here, uh, obviously just so it's not a very long, tedious process. So then you'll receive an email uh, where you've got to verify your email address, uh, pretty standard stuff. Once you've done that, go back in and hit the API keys section and just copy out the API key. This is what's going to give us access to the uh, API. There's also documentation and stuff in here, which is how I found out how to, to use the service, how I found out about parameters. Uh, so go and browse that if you want to. Then go into the Azure portal and go to your Logic App and create a blank Logic App. Uh, once you're in there, we're gonna set up a recurrence and for a timer and we're gonna run this daily, every one day and we're gonna add some parameters here for the hours and minutes so that we know when it's gonna run every day. Uh, it's not that important. Um, if you don't put this in, it will just run at the same time every day, which is when you, when you start the timer. Um, but it's nice to be explicit about when it's run so that you know when to expect the results. So next we're gonna initialize a variable called cities. The reason we've got this variable is we want 
specifically the weather information for four cities. So if you go and copy the uh, variable information from the instructions, we're going to have Reading, London, Manchester and Portsmouth in the UK. And this, the format of this is, is just a JSON um, array. So pretty easy to, to create your own or add cities or whatever you need to. Next, we're going to do a for each loop. So for each of these cities, we're going to run through the rest of the logic app. And uh, we're going to put an HTTP request, uh, which is going to be a get. So we're getting the weather data. Again, copy the API endpoint from the instructions. And uh, we're going to put the next bit in queries, not in headers. Uh, so if you put it in headers, this won't work. Copy that API key from your notepad and paste it in under app ID. Then Q for query is the city that we're going to do. So we need current item from that for each loop. Uh, just click on that in the um, dynamic content pop up and then units set to metric. So if you don't do this, it will use SI units, which means your temperatures come out in units Kelvin, uh, which normally we don't want. Um, although in a data lake scenario, you might want, want to do that. Next, we're going to have a condition and we're going to use the status code from that HTTP request to make sure that it actually succeeded. So check that that's 200. Uh, we're going to have an if true and if false. In this demo, we're not doing the if false, but you can imagine you could put an email or something in there. Next, we're going to put a pass JSON. So as I was saying earlier, we are going to uh, open up that JSON, pull out all of the stats, and then we're going to write them back into our own format. So we're doing a bit of transformation as the data comes into the lake. Uh, so here, uh, to do this parsing, we need an example of the data or we need to actually manually type what the schema is. So what I'm doing here is pasting the um, URL in, putting my API key into it, and then putting that into the browser so that I can just one off get some results. And then I'm going to go back in and say use sample payload to generate uh, the JSON schema. So I just paste that in and uh, it creates a schema for me. Now, in this instance, because we've got a mix of numbers with and without decimals, it actually gets a couple of them wrong. So what we're going to do is come back into Notepad and replace any time it says integer with number. And this will allow all of them to be decimals in case they come back with a decimal later. So sometimes when you do the initial call, uh, you don't get a decimal place, which makes it think it's an integer when it's actually not. And then it breaks later. So we're just going to replace those uh, so that we do it correctly just do a find and replace for integer and number and then we're going to copy that and paste it back in uh, normally you would understand the schema a bit better we're just doing this fairly quickly to demonstrate uh, how easy it is to get the data in so next we're going to do a compose and what the compose action is going to do is create a csv file with some of the data from the uh, json so we'll copy the first line you can type this manually in there and this is just comma separated values for city, temperature, etc. Uh, and then that will be our header row for the um, for the CSV. And then under that, we're going to put the corresponding uh, fields. So I know that name is city, temp is temperature, etc, etc. And if you look closely, I'm putting the comma and the space in between these as I go. So when I click on the um, dynamic content, it puts the thing in, then I do comma space, then I move on to the next one so that we've got a properly formatted comma separated values. You could use tabs uh, or you could just generate a text file, whatever you wanted to. So next we're going to uh, connect to our blob store and we're going to do a create blob. So when you first click on this, you have to set up a connection and uh, in this instance, I've done it before, so I've already got one. But if I click add new, this is the screen you'll see. Put a name in there. So uh, we use data lake in a day uh, storage and then choose the storage account that is in your data lake in a day uh, resource group that you configured in the first lab. Next, we're going to put a folder path in. We can browse to it um, or we can manually type it. Uh, the interface is a little strange, so if you try and mix the two, then it the cursor jumps about a bit. So just check what you're typing and we want forward slash raw forward slash weather JSON. And this is going to put our JSON files uh, in their raw format onto the lake. So here we're going to give it the blob a name. So here we're going to use city 
uh, which is one of the uh, variables from past JSON. Then we're going to do format date time and pass that in UTC now, which is the time that this is running. And then we're going to take a format of year, 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 month, month, day, day. And this gives us a file name of, for instance, Reading 2020 um, JSON. And so we can see very quickly that is today's weather because that's when we called it. That's what the date stamp was on the file. And we can then use that later on for, for other purposes. Uh, and in the content of the blob for that one, we're just going to use the body of the response from the HTTP. And that is just the, the full JSON file will get dumped into that file. Next, we're going to create exactly the same thing, but this time in weather CSV. So this is where we're going to dump the composed uh, text that we've created in that previous task. And we're going to do the same name. So uh, we're going to choose the name variable, which contains our city name, and then put format date time, UTC now, and the year, month, day format. Uh, this also allows us to sort those files by, uh, by date and by city quite easily within that folder. Uh, so we'll put a .csv at the end and this time choose the output of the compose job in the dynamic content. And that's the logic app finished. We'll click save and then we'll click run just to run through it and see those results coming back. So logic apps by default when you run it uh, will actually change the interface into the, uh, the kind of feedback so that you can immediately see the results of running your job. There's also a separate logging uh, part of the app so that you can see that later on an ongoing basis. So here we can see green ticks all the way down uh, and we can see there were four iterations of the for each loop and if I expand that out then we can see we've got a create blob, we can see the content that was put in the first one which is our JSON and we can see the content that's put in the second one uh, which is the corresponding CSV data. And you could see there on the screen this is the, the one for Reading if I click the forward arrow on the for each loop, then we would see the Manchester, London, etc. Uh, so there you can see the city, the temperature, blah, 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 which is the content of the CSV. So now we'll flip over to the storage account in the resource group where we've stored these, go to containers, and we can see that raw uh, container. And we've now got two new folders. Each of them contain four files, uh, four CSVs and four JSON. And you can quite happily just look into those. Uh, and see the content yourself, which should be the weather information for the day you're running this um, in each of the formats. So hopefully you've enjoyed that and uh, hopefully you've also had a go at that following the instructions from the link below. Um, please do go off and do the entire course. Uh, we designed this as a workshop to be run in a day, uh, so it shouldn't take you too much time to follow through the instructions on your own. Uh, or you can wait for the, the other videos in the series. If you subscribe below, that will add the entire series to your uh, personal feed so that as and when the, the next labs and sessions come up, you'll just see them. You won't have to go searching for them and that kind of stuff. Also hit the like button if you enjoyed the, the uh, video and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.